The cerebellum is a structure attached posteriorly to the brainstem that is involved in adaptive learning and motor coordination. The basic cerebellar circuit has two common excitatory inputs, the climbing fibers and the mossy fibers, that excite the cerebellar cortex and deep cerebellar or vestibular nuclei. The Purkinje fibers form the output, inhibiting these nuclei. The combined signal from these fibers will form the final cerebellar output. There are three different circuits that relay information through deep nuclei to cortical regions and peripheral tracts. These are called the cerebrocerebellar, spinocerebellar, and vestibulocerebellar circuits. In this video, we will discuss the vestibulocerebellar circuit. The mossy fibers originate ipsilaterally from the vestibular apparatus. They have excitatory input on the cerebellar cortex and the vestibular nuclei along with the climbing fibers. The final output from the vestibulocerebellar circuit will descend to the vestibular spinal tract and medial longitudinal fasciculus. This circuit is important in the control of balanced equilibrium, smooth pursuit eye movements, and the vestibulo-ocular reflex. Damn, Daniel. Meet Dr. Bone. She will be testing two students for potential cerebellar injuries. This is patient one. She has experienced some dizziness since the explosion. Here, Dr. Bone is testing the patient's balance using the Romberg test. Clearly, Dr. Bone loves her job. Patient one is able to maintain her balance with no visual input. Dr. Bone will now test patient one's smooth pursuit eye movements. Dr. Bone notices that she is able to follow the visual stimulus without head movement. Next, Dr. Bone tests the patient for an intact vestibulo-ocular reflex. Dr. Bone moves the patient's head while she focuses on one fixed point. Since patient 1 has properly demonstrated these three reflexes, Dr. Bone has concluded she has not sustained injury to her vestibulo-cerebellar circuit. This is patient 2. She has experienced vertigo, nausea, headache, and imbalance while standing or walking since the explosion. In the Romberg test, patient 2 is unable to maintain her balance without visual input. Dr. Bone notices that patient 2 is unable to perform smooth pursuit eye movements and presents with nystigmus when focusing on a stimulus. In the test for the vestibular ocular reflex, Dr. Bone moves the patient's head while she focuses on one fixed point, but patient 2 is unable to maintain focus and her eyes wander. Since patient 2 has been unable to demonstrate these three reflexes, Dr. Bone has concluded that she has sustained injury to her vestibulocerebellar circuit. Dr. Bone recommends further neurological testing such as a CT scan to test for cerebellar hemorrhage, which could be the reason for her symptoms. Examination of these two patients demonstrates the importance of the vestibulocerebellar circuit. Currently, clinical tests make it difficult to distinguish between a vestibulocerebellar circuit injury and acute labyrinthitis, a problem with the inner ear. It is important for physicians to be aware of their similarity and use CT scans to distinguish between them, since cerebellar injury can become fatal.